Good afternoon, House Chair, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. There must be a water shortage because some of the speeches today have been very dry. Let me start by quoting from the Minister's foreword from the 2021-2022 annual report of the Department of Water and Sanitation. I quote, where some of the infrastructure may not be old, the dismal and inadequate maintenance, particularly of municipal infrastructure, is an Achilles heel. At the same level, there is slow delivery of new infrastructure development. The outcome thereof is the slowing down of access to water for many of our people. Quote ends. So we all agree then on the failure of the department on its core mandate to date. Honestly, it's not really surprising, uh, noting that Nomvula Mokanyani was at the helm of this department while she was actively pursuing the state capture agenda. It was her deputy minister, Nomvula Mokanyane, that saw the end of the blue drop reports because they told such a sad story. You should perhaps ask uh, the later minister, Sisulu, whose idea it was to bring them back. Fellow South Africans, there is a water supply crisis already underway in South Africa, and it is man-made. In many instances, we have the water. The integrated Vile River system is uh, currently at 91% of capacity, and that's at the start of the rainy season. So why does Gauteng have a water shortage? The Democratic Alliance's lead in the Gauteng province, Honorable Solim Simango, who's here today as a special delegate, has been on the case for months now in Gauteng. And when he raised the concerns at the end of March this year, he received a dismissive response from Randwater, which prompted a headline which reads, Randwater hits back at Misimanga. Well, they say a week is a long time in politics, but now seven months later, Randwater is struggling to keep up supply and the honorable members predictions have indeed come to fruition. We are not happy, happy about it, but Randwater has been pointing fingers in every direction, blaming municipalities, blaming Eskom and blaming water users themselves. Honorable Mr. Munger's site inspections on rainwater infrastructure show a shocking lack of maintenance. Poor management and no planning have begun to show as Gauteng bursts at the seams with people flocking to find scarce work opportunities. In the face of increasing demand, delivery capacity has gone backwards. Not enough infrastructural spending on new capacity as well as on maintaining existing assets has meant that water losses are increasing and purified water, amongst the best quality in the world, is wasted at great expense. The same situation is replicated around the country and with other water boards and other water service authorities. And yes, Honorable Bartlett, municipalities are a big part of the problem. A lack of skills and a lack of planning are to blame, but also a lack of political will. It's really not sexy to dig up an old pipe and put in a new one. There's no ribbons to cut so that it doesn't get done. Non-revenue re non water averaged around 36% in 2012, already a high figure for a water-scarce country, as numerous people have told us today. But today we are closer to 50% in terms of non-revenue water. Let's get back to Rand Water. They supply 17 municipalities in Gauteng, the Free State, the Northwest Province, and in Pumalanga. These municipalities serviced over 14 million residents uh, in the 2011 last census. By the 2016 household survey, that number had grown by 10% to 15.6 million people, and it's expected now to be close to 17 million people. Now, Rainwater received their water use license in 2009 to abstract 1.3 million megaliters a year. They are currently drawing one, more than 1.7 million. The license has not been reviewed since 2009, in spite of the 20% population growth that the municipalities that they serve have experienced. That is a national department failure. Never forget, when talking about water, that the same department is responsible for sanitation and therefore responsible for the dumping of megaliters of raw sewage into our drinking water in Empoleni, in Solplaiki, 
in KwaZulu-Natal and all over South Africa. If one looks at the 4.6 million lit billion liters that rainwater delivers to the municipalities, servicing those 17 million people, and considers that almost half of it is lost to leaks, wastage or theft, that leaves daily consumptions at about 162 liters per person per day. That's well below the world average of 185 liters per day. Consumers are not the problem. Contrast all of this with a small DIA-run municipality called Midval, who took a strategic decision several years ago under the guidance of then city manager, engineer, sorry, city engineer, Steph Kutsia, and an MMC who will remain nameless today, to reduce reliance on rainwater. Reservoirs that had been mothballs were refurbished and two new reservoirs and, water, and a water tower were built in time and in budget. This gives our residents a two to three day cushioning against the failures of rainwater in Eskom. That's the DA difference. As I conclude, House Chair, the message is clear. If we want sustainable water supply, we need a capable state. The current system of Carter deployment has not worked for South Africans. And yet, Sir Ramaphosa and his party remain adamant that they will not change this policy. So, if South Africans want to change their future, they need to change their government. Thank you.